Here. Say, for the sake of argument, you're the kind of progressive lefty with a platform who gets a share of harassment, seasonal or perennial, from reactionaries. In this situation, you will inevitably hear one who positions themselves as a reasonable moderate ask, why don't you respond to criticism? What a perfect video from the alt-right playbook, why don't you respond to criticism? Innuendo Studios has an incredible library of content, and they are so incredibly prescient. There's a lot going on in that question, more than is immediately obvious, and it's worth understanding. First, is that the question is not only directed at you. It exists as a marker, showing up in your Q&As, your comment sections, your Twitter threads, to imply to anyone paying attention to you that there is some wealth of legitimate criticism that you have long ignored. Now, there may well be a specific point this person is referring to, but it's often left unspecified or generalized, so that the content, and the quantity of the criticism, is left to audience imagination. It is meant to publicly undermine your legitimacy. Second, it's meant to make you question whether there is some legitimate criticism out there in the din of people screaming at you. You're not perfect, and a knock-on effect of being harassed is you get numbed out, unable to discern good faith from bad, often removing yourself from the very streams through which your peers used to correct you because of the endless flow of garbage coming through those channels now. But the only way to verify the ambiguous claim that there is some criticism worth responding to is to once again strap on waiters and climb back in, which is often what your critic really wants. Third, well, the question isn't really, why don't you respond to criticism? Odds are you do respond to some criticism. People in your position are often addressing or preempting criticism all the time, arguably too much. No, what this non-specific question is really asking is, why don't you respond to my criticism? They'll let it sound like you've been ignoring everyone, but they mean, why are you ignoring me? They're going to insist you owe them a response, that their critique, regardless of your opinion of it, is valid and demanding of immediate attention. Odds are there are dozens of people saying the same thing, all at the same time. Fourth, odds are good that you have in fact addressed their specific complaint, but not in a manner they will accept. You can tell they're a Destiny fan by their past logs asking if it's okay in certain circumstances for a white person to say the N-word. Donald Trump AI, you don't want to know what Hassan's doing inside my echo chamber. He's a previous sub, dude. Chill. Is it wrong for a teacher to say the N-word in a lecture about Jim Crow? Is there ever a case where it's okay for a white person to use the N-word? Why are y'all like this, bro? Why? Why are y'all... Here, take a week off, okay? Just take a fucking week off. Please. Please, dude. Please, why is this such an important motivating factor for you? Oh my god. This one person's criticism is likely not unique. You may have covered it somewhere in your output purely because you know what kinds of arguments are getting thrown at you. Isn't this just about you and the house stuff, Lamau? Like, they now feel they have something real to critique, but they don't? Yes, this is something that happens to many leftist content creators who... Uh, are, are placed into a situation where they have to abide by standards that they themselves didn't even set for themselves that have nothing to do with their worldview at all. Being like an online leftist is constantly being held up to a higher standard than everybody else, but also beyond being held up to a higher standard than everybody else, a standard that they claim you actually created for yourself when it has nothing to do with your worldview whatsoever. That's usually, that's usually where this comes from you, and you're just covering your bases. There's a decent chance your critic doesn't actually consume enough of your work to have seen it, but it's maybe even more likely that they are fully aware of your counter-argument. You know, maybe one of your fans directed them to it. But they don't consider a response legitimate unless it is directed at the critic. Covering it in a different context or on a different platform doesn't count. They are owed a... Dude. This is literally like that one guy the other day who came in and was like, uh, Hassan is secretly an ultra-nationalist, uh, pro-Turkish, like, ultra-nationalist guy. He never talks about the Kurds. And then I literally was like, you're wrong. I have actually talked about the Kurds. And I gave him examples in, like, videos that I have actually covered about the issue, okay? And then he turned around and said, 
no, it only got 100,000 views, so it doesn't count. I need you to do a video where you just direct the camera, say you hate the Grey Wolves, and you talk about the Turkish ultranationalist movement, and then that video has to get more than 100,000 views. And it's ridiculous. Like, there is no... <laughs> like, th th that person is not a serious person. You know what I mean? He literally was like, I didn't see it, so it didn't happen. And okay, even if it did happen, now I'm adding additional prerequisites. If your actual issue, if your actual issue with me is a genuine disagreement that you have with one of my positions, we can have a conversation about that. But if your goal is to simply go, nope, I'm right and you're wrong, then yeah, we can't have a normal fucking, we can't have a normal conversation at all. Statement they can respond to directly because they want the argument to continue. So really the question is, why don't you respond to my criticism on my terms? Yes. Finally, even if you did respond to them by name, it's likely your response would still be disqualified. If you were to summarize their argument in any way, they would claim you are building a straw man. If you isolated any specific critique or pointed to the cruelty that accompanied it, they would claim you're cherry-picking. You must, it seems, first present the criticism full and unabridged before you may respond to it. Which is to say, the only correct way to respond to criticism is to platform the critic. And there are dozens- But even if you platform the critic and then you destroy them, quote-unquote, in the marketplace of ideas, then all of the other people with that same interest in gaining notoriety by behaving like this will now feel more galvanized. This is why back in the day, I used to fucking do Discord debates, hop in the Discord, right? Okay? And I would do it all the fucking time. But the only thing that I realized that cultivated was a community that was inherently hostile and very toxic and only cared about the blood sport of it all. They only cared about the debate. They only cared about who was rhetorically more gifted in that situation. They were not interested in learning new things unless they were kind of learning new things in the format of a debate. And every single time I like brought these people forward, obviously they did not know how to handle themselves on camera with the new amount of attention that they were reaching. And for that reason, and also because they were just bad at arguing their positions and their positions were bad, they would look like fucking dumbasses. Now, that made me look good in the eyes of all those people that wanted more debate, more blood sport, right? But there were so many people that also had those exact same positions that would then go, hold on, that guy was a dumbass. Pick me. Talk to me. I'm actually a smart guy. You're too afraid to talk to me. And then I would pull them up. I would do the exact same thing, and they would look silly. And then there would be 10 other guys in the chat going, hold on. That guy was a dumbass. Pick me instead. I will actually do a better job. This yielded zero positive interactions. Okay? That's it. Thousands who expect this of you, who will tear into you for not addressing in meticulous detail every single critique they have ever tossed your way, and in the same breath make fun of you for talking too much. Because they don't want to move on from why don't you respond to criticism. As a rhetorical tactic, it's pretty ace. To announce before the argument is even stated that it is thus far undefeated? Ah, oh. Because any response you make is going to keep the focus on you and not their argument. It's not worth responding to? Well, why should the accused get to decide what is and isn't worth responding to? I have responded repeatedly. Well, why didn't you respond in this particular way? None of this looks at whether the criticism had any credibility to begin with. Only at whether your response is following procedure. So now, there are criticisms that have been leveled against me that I have never engaged with. Say, for instance, that you shouldn't listen to me because I'm just four eels in a trench coat. How would I respond to that? What could I say that isn't exactly what four eels in a trench coat would say? I mean, I'm not wearing a trench coat, but obviously the first thing four eels... I have a friend who's like this with you, and I've spent quite a bit of time showing him clips where he addresses gripes. Eventually, he just came out and said, well, I just don't like him. That's perfectly fine, okay? And there's a prescription for that, too. He probably likes something that I like that I defend pretty fucking vociferously, and that's all it would take for him to change his mind. 
Stop trying to address the actual fucking fake false criticisms that these people have towards me. Okay? Identify what they actually care about and then show a video on that thing that I've definitely talked about and debated. That's it. That's it. Because I talk about a litany of issues. Okay? There are plenty of people who were like, Hassan is a fucking white supremacist or Hassan is a libtard or whatever the fuck. And then they saw my commentary on Palestine. Maybe they didn't know what my opinion on Palestine was before, but then they saw it after October 7 and were like, oh my God, I was really wrong about him. Okay. Because that was an issue that they cared about. The same goes for abortion or the same goes for Black Lives Matter, police brutality, criminal justice reform. Okay, there's always something that your friends, if they're your friends, they probably have like-minded opinions to you. Okay, there's a reason why the most common thing that a lot of people say whenever I do a collaboration with like another content creator, one of the most common things that you hear in the comments section is, I had no idea this was a normal dude. I had no idea that he was actually kind of fucking chill. The reason why they say that is because they've never actually seen me outside of a circumstance uh, where a hater is like greatly shaping the narrative of how bad of a person I am. That's it. That's why I also always say, as why I also always say, the greatest, the, the, the greatest fucking thing that you can do in this circumstance, the greatest thing you can do in this circumstance is just get someone to have an ounce of charitability and watch for an extended period of time. Okay, because if, if someone is in here, if someone is in here for an extended period of time, they are going to inevitably realize that perhaps they were deluded and wrong about the opinions that they had. Okay, deals would do when people start to catch on is switch to hoodies. I could show you my birth certificate that proves I was born of a human woman at a birth weight that four eels would not add up to. But did that work for Obama? Did the guy who said the birth certificate was fake get elected president? And obviously, all of my exhaustively researched and carefully argued points about how fascism has evolved on the social internet are suspect if I can't even prove I'm human. We stayed at war with Iraq for seven years after the government announced that the weapons of mass destruction we were looking for never existed. And there are people to this day who still believe we found them. So what hope do I, a mammal who would make mediocre sushi, Stand in the face of that. So, if you ever see this claim out in the wild, why haven't you responded to blank? Ask yourself, do you know what blank is? Do you yourself agree it's a valid question? And are you sure it hasn't already been answered? And don't repeat the question unless you've got three yeses. I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. Great video overall. Anyway, a major reason why I don't fucking address like uh, the drama baiters, even though it sometimes can yield good content, is that it ultimately it ultimately destroys the stream, like the flow of the stream. Um, it turns it into just like a me, 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 me operation where other people take notice of me reacting to them and then start behaving in troll-like ways. And then all I would be doing if I were to uh, address all of these things would just be to address all these things. It would it'd be like when people say, why don't you uh, call out everyone that subscribes? The entire stream would be me calling out everyone that subscribes. That's all I'd be doing. I remember earlier this year, I told a friend that they didn't like your content since it appeared more driven for engagement than educational and informative. However, over the last couple of months, I watched a lot of your content and developed a lot of respect for what you do. Thank you for using this platform to educate and spread critical thinking around some of the most important and relevant topics today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, one up dog. Here it is. I don't know about you, but I'm walking away from the blue party and closer to Jesus. I'm seeing the land of the free. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Where's Jesus? It took him out of the school. We started twisting the rules. I swear as long as I'm breathing. Praise his name and all that I say. Put the devil back in his place. Woo!
Back in 2016, the alt-right tried to normalize joyful bigotry and it worked. Donald Trump's and J.D. Vance's false claims about Haitians eating dogs and cats in Springfield, Ohio feels unsettlingly familiar. This echoes a long history of American nativists using fear tactics to demonize immigrants, often focusing on what they eat. Accusations about dog meat, in particular, have frequently been weaponized against new arrivals, especially Asians. A Chinese immigrant activist in the late 19th century once remarked, I never knew that rats and puppies were good to eat until Americans told me. But beyond this history lies something more troubling, the enthusiasm with which Republicans spread such blatantly bigoted lies. There is a sense of joy in dehumanizing a vulnerable migrant group. After Vance sparked the pet-eating panic with a tweet, pro-Trump internet users quickly flooded social media with memes and AI-generated images of Trump supposedly protecting animals from Haitians. When Representative Eric Swalwell criticized this fear-mongering, Representative Nancy Mace even shared one of the images to mock him. This all ties back to the alt-right a movement born from a mix of intellectualized racism, as promoted by the web publication Alternative Right and a trolling culture of message boards like 4chan, while figures like Alternative Right founder Richard Spencer dreamed of a white ethno-state, the channels re reveled in its shock value and transgression. As journalist Eel Reeve notes in her book Black Pill, making Nazi jokes was originally a way to keep outsiders away on 4chan. Over time, new users took those jokes seriously and eventually the group became what they once mocked, a collective of swastika posting zealots. This hurt lashed on to Trump during the 2016 election, recognizing his rise on as a movement when American political boundaries were shifting. And they were right. As Reeves book and a wealth of reporting shows, the lines between the Trump movement and the alt-right blurred considerably. If you found this video informative, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And thanks for watching.